perfectibility of humans and a blind eye to human self-deception and uh, ethnocentrism and so on are, are mistakes. We're better off acknowledging the dark side of humans, the better to cope with them than to wish them away because it's just depressing, too depressing to think about. On the other hand, you're right that um, if anything, the mo most sophisticated versions of evolutionary psychology have also shown that the, the better angels of our nature, as uh, Lincoln put it, also have an evolutionary basis, such as emotions like sympathy and trust and uh, gratitude and guilt uh, and that collectively make up what we call the conscience. Uh, that those are part of our endowment from evolution as well. And in fact, there's a, um, a whole field of psychology, a new field called positive psychology, uh, founded by Martin Seligman, who's also uh, sympathetic to evolutionary psychology, that tries to identify what, what went right in, uh, in human brain evolution and to get people, both as individuals in their own lives and perhaps collectively, to take advantage of, of, the, uh, of the better angels of our nature. Yes? Yes, uh, I don't know if I have a simple question because uh, I may be confused about some elements that you try to put, uh, get across here, or um, and perhaps you can amplify a little bit more. Uh, you had toward the end you had one the, the, you had one slide and you had a slide in which you state, quoting what you said, that s selfish genes do not make for self, for a cer do not necessarily, you didn't even use the word necessarily, you said do not make for a selfish person. Yes, but do not necessarily So my make, question right. is, well, if it's not the gene, in fact, I think you added it's, it's a process that may turn one human into a selfish person. But if that's so, then we should be concentrating on the process, not so much on the gene. And what brings my point, I think, home to me is that your last uh, answer to the question, to the uh, person who asked about um, your opinion on Freud and so forth, or how you fit him into this uh, uh, scenario, into your scenario, uh, bothers me a little bit because you immediately discounted his theories and coupled him with Bettelheim. Now, Bettelheim is not Freud. He, may, he postdated him, but that doesn't mean he improved anything. No, he has been discounted and discredited in many ways. Chiefly, or, I might just repeat, autism is not a psychoanalytical condition. Schizophrenia, and you did mention Freud in that, with that term, is not a, a neurotic, at least from my understanding, a condition. So. What we, when we talk about Freud and psychoanalysis, I don't think we really are talking, meant to talk about uh, schizophrenia, uh, schizophrenics, but rather neuroses that certainly do, I think Freud showed, do originate in childhood, mm -hmm. uh, and or at least be a, either nurtured or fostered in childhood. Uh, and that's a process. You see, it's not inherent in the human, in the child, initially. It's a process. So I, I don't know if I'm confusing uh, yeah. <clears throat> you with my coupling the selfish genes, needing a process to explain what happens to turn a person into a, 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 a selfish person with your comments on psychoanalysis. Yes. Well, the, the comments on, I, you're right in that my comments on psychoanalysis were really on the, uh, psychoanalytic tradition, including the uh, thinkers that postdated Freud, including uh, Bettelheim and, and others. Um, and it's true that Freud himself did not have uh, the refrigerator mother as a theory of autism, but Bettelheim did, working in a Freudian tradition and, and modifying it. But I think Freud did set the stage for um, a, a movement that was dominant in psychiatry until uh, recent decades that did try to seek the roots both of psychosis and neurosis in early childhood. Certainly, I think even most Freudians now would say, yeah, you can have psychosis. We're not going to uh, look to early childhood for that. Uh, fine, it's, it's genes and other causes. Um, it's not even clear to me, though, whether neuroses can be uh, attributed to uh, a child's relationship to his parents in the first six years of life. 
I know that the belief is widely held, and it's often the basis of uh, psychoanalytic psychotherapy, but um, it, I don't think it's been properly tested, and I think the studies that do bear on it uh, suggest that Freud may have been wrong about the neuroses as well, that it, it probably is not the way you were treated as a child, but pr some combination of genes and something else that's not genes, but that is not, also not parental treatment. Yes? Uh, one, just one point where you're talking about, I'm having a little trouble following the logic of your argument, when, you're, when you say uh, most of the studies done on social factors and parenting, for example, or bad studies, and then the, and then you go to these studies that link it to genetics and say are good, those are good studies. How, what's the criteria you're doing that on? And and if it's not identified with a specific gene, how you know to me you're kind of measuring a construct. So how do you make that evaluation? I guess. Oh, it's simple. I mean, it's just the usual criteria for social science research, namely that you shouldn't uh, attribute a correlation to causation until you measure plausible third variables that could explain the correlation. In this case, variable A is parental behavior, variable B is children's traits. Uh, the, the bad research simply interprets the correlation as a causation, uh, a causal relationship. Better research would at least measure the possible third factor uh, genes to see if it can be attributed to that as opposed to the putative cause, namely parenting. Uh, now, that's, it's not uh, the end of the story because simply knowing that sharing half a genome uh, has some causal effect uh, doesn't tell you how it has its causal effect. Uh, and I expect that the, um, a major new area of research over the next uh, few decades will be trying to get more specific about which genes do what at what stage of the developing brain, where are they expressed, uh, what do the gene products actually do to flesh out the causal story. Uh, right now, our measures are crude, but without a measure of possible effects of the genes, you're just, uh, people would just be committing the elementary uh, logical error of confusing correlation with causation causation with statistics, but there, you could be leaving out some other factors, too, is my only thing. You seem like, okay, you put in hereditary stuff, and now you've answered the question when you could possibly leave out other things, and you're never showing causation. You're making that assumption when you can only prove correlation, right? Well, the, in, in the case of, of um, genes, there is, uh, you can rule out some of the uh, possibilities because we know that, um, say, that growing up in the same home, for example, or being similar can't be read back and, and uh, change your DNA. So that kind of correlation can only go in one direction because Lamarck was wrong. Um, but again, that's not to deny your point that it leaves a lot of things open. And moreover, I should add that this, the research that I'm referring to also measures other factors besides uh, family, uh, uh, parental behavior, and um, genetic relatedness, such as possible effects of the child on how the parent treats that child as opposed to other children. So the um, individualized parenting that pa a parent might give to one child and not another, causing two children in the same home to in fact have slightly different environments, uh, also needs to be measured. And the, uh, a, a few of the most recent studies do measure it, but come to pretty much the same conclusions. That is that uh, once you control for genetic relatedness, then differential parental treatment of one child to another seems to be a consequence of the fact that the kids are different to begin with. Uh, they don't seem to add any additional measurable effect on how the children turn out. But that would be an example of other factors that ought to be and sometimes are measured. Okay, we'll just take uh, one more? Or, or no, or end it. No, I think uh, I've been asked to uh, end the evening to switch over to the uh, reception and the book signing. Uh, sorry for those of you who had questions, and thanks very much for your attention.